Gracias por estar otra vez en mi canal de YouTube, Rosana Magalú y Radio Megaluz Magalú. Thank you for being in my channel YouTube, Rosana Magalú, and also en radio online, megaluzmagalú.com.
stepping in and saying the invocation for us when needed. All right, do we have any announcements from the council? A lot of things going on this weekend. Mayor and council and the audience, uh, I have been asked to announce that the giving tree has been uh, placed up in. consists of 4.93 acres and it's over 3,500 feet in length. Uh, it begins at Highway 98 to the north and continues south to the uh, UP Railroad, uh, where that road currently terminates. The city has an easement interest uh, in the road as a result of it being previously maintained by Portman County uh, and later annexed by the city, and that was done back in 2012. Uh, but it does have minimal if any, public purpose now, uh, basically since it only provides access to this uh, property owner and that property, uh, not any other. So, uh, also wanted to mention the utility easement has already been put into center point energy uh, for the facilities uh, they have in the roadway there for center point uh, has no objections to this and issued a letter uh, concurring with the property owner's request uh, but briefly if you don't have an idea of, where, of this road or where it's located you can see here uh, on the screen the intersection with uh, 90 uh, it's an unimproved road there immediately south of 90 here's a look going south on the road and then as you uh, see where it dead ends there before for the track, so that's what we're looking at abandoning. Uh, with that said, uh, staff uh, has no objections to this. Uh, the process is outlined in our ordinances, uh, and under that ordinance, the, the item uh, requires a recommendation from the planning commission. Uh, they recommend the approval back in May uh, this year. So, uh, with that said, staff does recommend approval of ordinance uh, 2019. Did you know? I don't blame them for wanting to close the road on a, permanently on this side. I was opposed to closing the road on the south side when it was done by a former council. I think I lost that vote, obviously one to, I obviously lost it. I think it was a one to six vote. Uh, the Junker family was opposed to the closing of that road. And it led to another a third train track, I believe, requested by the uh, train company. Result is more train traffic uh, in Rosenberg. So, anyways, uh, we will begin with uh, Richard. Wish to vote to accommodate this request. I don't want any issues with it. Well, there are none that live on it. No, there's that. Actually, not. Okay, uh, uh, Jacob. I have no objection to it. All right. Uh, ready? Yes, sir. Question I got is you say it's no longer a road. What happens to that? Well, I mean, it becomes basically uh, private property. You'll see in the, in the next agenda item, the city will uh, approve basically the lease and even the interest we have in it. And then it's basically uh, the, the property owners, with the exception of you know, Center Point, still has an easement over it for facilities and there's other pipeline. They do have to maintain it. It is a gravel road, so it's, it's you know, additional maintenance to keep 
keep hot balls repaired. And one of the other issues uh, they have regularly, regularly out there is people illegally dumping trash since it's dead in the streets and then we're having to spend um, resources uh, to go out there and clean up, clean up the trash that's been illegally dumped. Yeah, so it will actually save the city money picking up yes. trash and maintaining the ground. All right, that being said, uh, we need a motion. Motion to approve the order for the My motion to approve by Councilor Valdera, second by Councilor Bay Gregory. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Your opponents indicate by saying no. All right, the ayes have it. All right, number four, release. An abandonment of it's the, it's it's related uh, to the, the last item. But it's a different uh, all right, different different motion. Consideration of an action on resolution number R-2874, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute for on behalf of the city a release and abandonment of Junker Road between Highway 90 and Union Pacific Railroad between a, uh, sorry, being a 60 foot wide strip consisting of 4.93 acres in the Henry Scott League, Abstract 83, City of Rosenberg, Fort Bend County, Texas. Sir, so a previous item was an ordinance that had to be approved in order for the city to abandon the road because it's a public uh, road. However, this item uh, basically authorizes the city manager to execute a document that once it's signed and approved and everything, it'll be recorded. Uh, and basically, it release any easement interest the city has in the property. And because that's in the county records, that will you know, show up on um, the title report and, and so on uh, to make sure it's, it's free of uh, the city having any kind of easement interest. So uh, that'll be the, the final item that's been taken care of on this. And uh, staff does recommend approval of resolution R2874, which would basically authorize the city manager to execute this so we can file and move on. All right, unless there's any other discussion on this, would be a motion. Make a motion to approve resolution R2874. All right, a motion made by Councilor Valdera, second by Councilor Wallingford. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. If you're opposed, indicate by saying no. The ayes have it. Yeah, um, well, you know, I'd like to just as briefly as I can. Sir, could you please tell us your address? Sure. My name's Chris Junker. Like my sister, I grew up in Rosenberg. Here it is, speak about a proposal that Union Pacific made back in October. My address, also maintaining my address in Sunrise, Florida. The reason I wanted to uh, speak about this, and the main thing I wanted to ask for is, like what my sister said, I would like to have the opportunity, I think, uh, Union Pacific made a 27 or 28 minute uh, presentation, roughly half an hour, back on October the 27th. And I would like for us to have that same opportunity. Um, I would briefly say though that they've proposed building a siding rail um, about 10,000 feet long, roughly two miles. Uh, and I think that uh, siding rail, aside from being detrimental to the value of our property because it cuts off the most valuable access. It's also, uh, it's going to be detrimental to the city's development out there because it's going to cut off access to the surrounding land. And that has been, I think, the city annexed out to Spur 10. So it seems as though the city has designated that as a development corridor. One just looks at the businesses that are growing out there, Aldi, which has a regional warehouse and headquarters out there. Uh, I think Councilmember Wallingford, I, I watched the video of the October presentation, noted about, and others probably did too, about emergency services. It's true that if emergency responders will know if it's closed, but that doesn't account, or that doesn't address the issue, that it will delay. If somebody gets in a car wreck, you know, there's what's called the golden hour, I'm sure, um, you know, level one trauma centers are in the medical center in Houston, Ben Tom and Memorial Hermann. Helicopters can't fly all the time. By the time they get it fired up and out there, 
and always get out there on time. So what might seem to be small delays could make a huge difference in life and death or recovery or non-recovery. Uh, and the, the, the last thing is, from the railroad standpoint, the first two miles of that track coming out of Rosenberg are owned by Union Pacific. The rest of it, 90 miles all the way to Victoria, is a Kansas City Southern track. So if they cross the track, they're going across Kansas City Southern. That basic, Union Pacific has another route from Houston to Victoria. And according to TxDOT maps, that's a high traffic route. The one uh, <clears throat> down 529 that we, that's been talked about is not. And so, uh, Kansas, I'm sorry, let me just say Kansas City Southern already has a switching facility out there and they can use that facility for this. And they do plan a siding track and I've talked to the Director of Engineering at Kansas City Southern. Thank you, Mr. Junker, your time's up. Yeah. And I hope you'll give us the opportunity for a full presentation. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Bridget Turner.
Is this Mr. Ken Lukanoff? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Lukanoff, my name is Chris Junker. I spoke to you the other day. Well, you had mentioned, I was just asking about, um, I think Union Pacific was, uh, you said it, but it was uh, Kansas City Southern that is building a, they're building a sidetrack there in Rosenberg. Oh, yeah, Farmer UP is building it, but it's on behalf of the KCS. It's for the KCS? Yes, yeah. they're, they're funding it. They're the ones that are funding it? Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, I would suggest that you talk to the KCS. This is their project, like I told you the other day. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I was just misinformed. I was under the under, uh, under the impression that this was a Union Pacific project, but apparently... Oh, okay, so yes, this KCS is the one that initiated it and is funding it, but because it connects to a portion that the Union owns, our forces are doing the work. Okay, so you have a siding project near Gen Road, is that correct? Somewhere around there. Yeah, uh, near Beasley, near your intermodal facility. That I mean, your intermodal facility is right there at Gen Road. So. Yeah. Yeah. What What is your name, sir? Sri. Sri. Yes. Sir. Is that your last name or first name? That's my first name. And your last name, sir? H O N N U R. H O N N U R. Uh huh. Yes, sir. At honor. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, well, my, my name's Chris Junker, and uh, okay, so the one, the track that you said was the best one for for um, for switching is, is the one out there in Beasley. That's the one you're referring to, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I see. And, that, and, and you all own all of that track from, you know, basically starting at that two-mile stretch right outside of Rosenberg all the way to Victoria. Is that correct? That, that particular area that you're talking about, the town, it's undeveloped land right at the moment that we're speaking, but it's not going to last that way for very long. And one of the things that potential investors will look at is accessibility. Correct. So, Council Barter? You are not just concerned with what uh, my only concern would be the, uh, the landowners and the potential of the, the growth for that area. That crossing will close. Okay, and, and you said the um, loss of that access is important, particu particularly in commercial property because of yeah, the access to customers, um, and they can, it would have an effect on how you would configure any improvements that you have because of the access that you can, if you can't get to it from that. Side, there are probably some uh, uh, um, potential options that you would have for development that will not will be foreclosed because you can't get to them and that sort of thing. What happens is that someone that's considering putting in a facility that needs ease of of access and uh, easy and an easy out kind of thing, they're just going to put a property like that at the bottom of the list um, and will. I generally uh, probably uh, exact a significant discount in the offers that they'll be willing to make for it. Uh, from that, that's how uh, the uh, economics of it works. It's uh, get down to the nitty gritty. It's the uh, added expense and inconvenience that, that uh, they would have to endure for uh, owning that property versus another one that had. Uh, superior access and uh, ease of access. Uh, potential purchasers of that 
property being aware of that, uh, probably from what I'm maybe gathering from what you said, their enthusiasm for uh, you know purchasing and or locating their uh, you know business operation in that locale may be diminished significantly. Is that a fair assessment of what I understood you to say? Yeah, that's that's essentially it. The uh, you know if they're they're faced with several uh, potential uh, opportunities, potential sites, um, and the rest of them don't have those kind of drawbacks, uh, uh, you're going to be at a severe disadvantage uh, uh, in the in trying to attract a buyer. Uh, so somebody might have to drive a mile. Or so out of the way if they're really at the back end of our property in order to get to the same road. Does that seem to add to diminishment or is that not a major deal? Does that make Sounds sense? Sounds like a significant one uh, uh, issue to me. So, so reduction in access goes hand in hand with reduction of development likelihood or capability, which I guess sort of leads to reduction in desirability, thus reduction in market value. Is that for those? That's basic. That's pretty much it, yes. Yeah.